Barbara O'Neill is somebody that uh, I've, I've seen mentioned in the comments section before. And one of her videos came up and it's about uh, water and salt. She has a really good video here. I'm going to be uh, uh, reviewing it or reacting to it or whatever in a couple seconds here. But she did say something uh, like midway through the video that absolutely makes no sense to me What? So ever. So I wanted to talk about that as well. It's kind of contradictory to some of the other stuff she was saying. Uh, just like all of the, I think she's a doctor. I have no idea. But why is every single one of them contradict themselves? I don't understand. Water. The, mo the second most vital element needed for life. I'm not going to do too much commenting here, I don't think. Uh, but there will probably be a little bit. So the number one vital element needed for life is oxygen. And that, that's not a surprise, is it? The second most vital element needed for life is water. You can go three minutes without oxygen. You can go a couple of weeks without water. I always thought it was three days without water until I read of, I read a book called The Long Walk about some people who were escaping the Siberian work camp and they were in the desert and they went nearly two weeks without water. Water is the second most vital element needed for life. In fact, where there's no water, you don't usually get people living, do you? You know, I've, I've had this conversation actually with fruitarians who think that they, they get all their water from fruit and that's just not the case. Like even, you know, if you think of the tropics where everybody thinks that we or that we did originate from, it was on water. And I know the water was salt water, but there's going to be inland water and waterfalls is with where you're going to get your water from. So it is very important. I always say to people, how much water do you drink? And these are some of the answers are, uh, I don't like water. Uh, that one, I just don't understand. How do you not like water? It really, it, you know, it. I, I, I don't understand that. Unless it's tap water. Tap water tastes terrible. Um, if I drink water, my feet swell. If I drink water, I'm going to the bathroom all day. Those last two answers tell me that the water's not getting inside the cell. So how do we get the water inside the cell? We have to go to the third most vital element needed for life, and that is sodium. The fourth most vital element needed for life is potassium. So let's go back to sodium. In nature, we find the highest amount of sodium in seawater. And seawater contains 92 minerals. Of those 92 minerals, 30%, approximately 30% is sodium. And of those 92 minerals, approximately 50% is chloride. Now, because sodium chloride take up the most amount, they're the first crystals formed when the water is evaporated. So what man does is he scoops up the first crystals formed, he bleaches them white, puts aluminium with it so that it runs freely, and there's your table salt. That's why I've never liked table salt. It, it did, something always felt wrong about it. Table salt is a dangerous, is a dangerous salt because we now have two very harsh minerals that if you were into inject both of those into the blood, you would die. There's two harsh minerals and they need all the other 90 to soften them and balance them. The highest concentration of mineral inside the cell is potassium. The highest concentration outside the cell is sodium. And in this bilayered membrane that is around every cell, there are sodium potassium pumps. And these sodium potassium pumps are ever going like this, maintaining the balance between potassium and sodium. But when someone's not eating enough fruits and vegetables, and that's where you get most of your potassium, and they're- I, I think she's one that hates bananas later though. I, I, you know, it's some of the stuff that, I really like what she says. I like a lot what a lot of these doctors say, but you know, at some point they seem to contradict themselves. 
putting table salt on everything far too much, what happens now is sodium levels rise and potassium levels drop. There is a small amount of sodium in the cell, but when this happens, you see osmosis and diffusion happens when the highest concentration merges into the lowest. So now sodium levels inside the cell are rising, which they should not, and the cell swells. What's that called? High blood pressure. The doctor is right. Table salt will, will contribute to high blood pressure. There's a French doctor named Dr. Lelangry, and he's written a whole book on salt. He said, when people come to me with high blood pressure, I put them on Celtic salt. Why does he put them on Celtic salt? Because Celtic salt contains 82 minerals. It's a hand harvested sea salt. So the minerals are in the Celtic salt in their balanced form. What about Himalayan salt? In many places, Himal Himalayan salt is a lot easy to get. There's 70, about 75 minerals. So it's pretty good. But I prefer the Celtic salt. And one reason is that the Celtic salt has three magnesiums. It contains magnesium chloride and magne magnesium bromide and magnesium sulfate. Magnesium is a water-hungry molecule, and this explains why the Celtic salt is such a moist salt, especially when we've had a lot of rain, because those three magnesiums absorb the moisture. And because magnesium is a water-hungry molecule, it can be used to help the water get into the cell. So when you take a crystal of Celtic salt, put it on your tongue, and some say, how big's a crystal? Well, if you've got high blood pressure, start small, about the size of a sesame seed. I don't have high blood pressure, so I might have about three times little sesame seeds. Put it on your tongue, your mucous membranes start absorbing them. It's crazy how fast this stuff dissolves. So this is actually something that I've done in the past. I did it with Himalayan uh, salt. So I kind of like hear, hearing what you had to say about the Celtic salt, uh, largely because that's part of the world I'm from. So I kind of, uh, uh, you know, like, you know, kind of infusing with that. Um, it makes a lot of sense. I've been trying it the last few days. It's been working out quite well. Um, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to probably by the time this video comes out, I'll actually have gotten Celtic salt because it's not that hard to get. But it's very interesting minerals the magnesium is taken to the cell membrane and you drink your water and that magnesium pulls that water inside the cell it's the quickest way to hydrate a body i kind of want to add a little bit more to that so back in the day i think i was still mostly raw i i kind of i actually am still i mean i i eat a little bit of cooked food at night but um what i would do is i would take a pretty big uh you know rock of himalayan salt and i would drop it in water and it dissolves i don't know if anybody's ever done this but it dissolves and then i would just drink that and it, it was quite amazing how much different you felt like electrically charged after you did this now when you're talking about sleep water sugar if you're a durian rider fan um if you're drinking like i've always wondered this if you watch my channel and i forgot that i used to do the salt thing I drink so much water, like I had days where I drank four gallons of water and I was still peeing like yellow, like dark yellow. And I couldn't figure it out. Maybe this is it, I don't know. This is why I'm making this video. The only time excess water drinking can be dangerous is if people drink too much at once and don't have the minerals that are in the Celtic salt to pull that water inside the cell. I've had people complain to me. They say, I'm drinking more water now and now I'm going to the bathroom all day. So I say, are you, are you having the salt? Have a little crystal be before every glass of water. And ideally, we should be having approximately eight glasses of water a day. And then I say to them, and don't drink a whole glass at once. <laughs> I think I mentioned earlier, I drink half a glass as soon as I get up. I go to the bathroom, I drink another half glass. Then I get dressed and have another half glass. But when I start every glass, I have that little bit of salt. So you spread the water over the day. 
And many people have said to me, thank you so much, that, that has made a big difference. See, huge water in, it's not long before huge water has to come out. Glucose, it can't get into the cell by itself. All right, so here is where it kind of derails for me a little bit. It has to have insulin. Insulin's the key that unlocks the door to let the glucose into the cell. And what happens with many people before diabetes develops? Diabetes. Diabetes. Insulin resistance develops. You've heard of insulin resistant? And when insulin resistance develops, the cells resisting insulin, so the glucose can't get into the cell, so the glucose stays in the blood, and the brain says to the pancreas, more insulin, more insulin, but the problem's not more insulin, the problem is there's insulin resistance at the cellular level. So what causes the insulin resistance? It's the high carbohydrate, high sugar diet. I was so surprised when I heard this, that she was down on sugar. I can't, I can't believe it. How do you have this much research and then you are, are against sugar? I, I just don't understand it. It's just, get the cell gets to the point where it says, we've got enough, sick of the sight of you. So how to recover from insulin resistance is to get the glucose, those carbohydrates right down, get the fiber up, the good proteins and the healthy fats. This uh, derails my, uh, it, it just, wow. That's the best way to recover from insulin resistance. She's basically calling for keto, but then uh, I, I didn't put this part in. The, they were talking about the morning meal that they had was lentils. But you just imagine for a moment, and this is happening in America a lot today, people are not drinking enough water they're not having the whole salt and they're definitely not having many greens, which is where your magnesium is. So the little bit of water they're having is not getting inside the cell. They don't go out in the sunshine because they're scared of getting skin cancer. Just put on your uh, SPF 50 uh, that causes skin cancer. So they're not getting their vitamin D, so the calcium can't get in and the minerals can't get in and they're trying to lose weight, so they've listened to a lot of the media hype that you gotta stop the fat, cause fat. I don't know what year this was shot, but there's no media hype on you gotta watch fat, it's all keto. Will make you fat. So they're on a high carbohydrate diet. Remember what fat will do? It'll give you satisfaction or a satiation, a full feeling. But if you're not having any fat, you just eat and eat and eat. And I don't agree with this at all. I am the guy that can literally eat like avocado after avocado after avocado, ask for another one. I can, I can make a bowl of seven avocado uh, guacamole and literally finish the entire thing. So I don't agree with this at all, at all, at all. And eat, and eat, and eat. The whole packet of cookies goes, the whole chips go. That And there you go. This is her example of sugar. That's her example. Not good. Then she makes it even worse by her, her sugar, her sugar, uh, uh, examples are, what, what did she say, chips and cookies. Uh, there's no fat involved in that? Uh, I think there is. Let's, let's look at some labels here. All right, so if she's, I think she's a doctor. It sounds like she's a doctor. But if she isn't, I mean, all of these doctors are saying me a, a completely different things. None of them agree on anything. If I if I have time, I'm going to throw some things in here of, of different doctors. It's just. All right. So the, there's quite a bit more video left. I'll link it down below because it's actually a really good, um, really good video like really good but she did throw me off with the uh sugar hate thing in there especially seeing i've had such good health from sugar and i know a lot a lot of other people who have so 
I don't know. I, I just don't quite understand why none of them seem to line up like at all whatsoever. If you watch all of these guys, you know, they, they all contradict themselves. They contradict each other. Uh, so that is my reaction to this video. I think the salt information is extremely uh, valuable, but the rest of it is just so bizarre to me. Like how, because she's talking about lentil soup. In some of it, and then she's talking about all these vegetables or like vegetable soups. And I, th I, you know, I think she was mentioning starch. So I, I don't quite understand where she's coming from. I don't watch her a lot. So maybe there's, uh, there's probably more to that than, uh, what I've seen. But anyway, uh, questions, comments, like always down below, like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next one.